Hi, my name is Gabe Belanger. I'm a technician at Computer Geeks on Call. Very often I use the system configuration utility to speed up people's computers. It's extremely effective. So let's talk about what it is that it does. Well, what it does is it turns off programs that automatically run. These are programs that you don't want running. There are some programs that you do want running and those you leave running. So Microsoft came up with this invention um, in the Windows 98 operating system. So let's get to it. First of all, what's the problem? Well, the problem is there are too many programs running. So let's determine how many programs are running. What you do is you take your mouse, you put it on the taskbar, you right click, and you choose Task Manager. You can also hit Control Alt Delete and it will come up. Uh, often it will come right into Task Manager. Sometimes you have to click the Task Manager button. So we click Task Manager and there we have Windows Task Manager. Now normally it starts up here and it shows what programs are running. But you know, there's more to it than this. If you look at the bottom left, it says Processes 54. Now, Windows XP Pro, which is what I'm running, comes with about 30 processes. So that means 24 are extra that have been added on. So let's look at the processes. If we click the Processes tab, you can see there are 54 items here. Not all of these I want. Some of these I don't have a choice. They have to be here. Now quickly, let's look at something else interesting here, and that's performance. If you click on the Performance tab, you will see the amount of RAM that's available. For me, I'm in good shape. I have 284 megabytes available. That's quite good. Um, if you find that you have 50 megabytes or less, and by the way, 50 megabytes is would be 50,000 K, that's what it would appear as, then you need more RAM. That's what I would recommend. But even better is run through the system configuration utility, and you can easily speed up your computer. So first of all, we have 54 processes that's about 24 more than Microsoft uh, puts on Windows XP Pro, which is what I'm running. So that's just to see, you know, if this is an issue for me. Well, it is. So I close this window. Next thing to do is to run the system configuration utility. So you click Start, you locate, and click on Run, and then you type in MS, as in Microsoft, Config. So MS config. You click OK and up comes, whoopsie, up comes the system configuration utility. You can see normal startup is selected. That means everything is loaded. If I go to the startup tab, you can see there are a ton of programs running automatically. So I'm putting my pointer here on the divider between these two columns, holding it down and then moving to the right so I can see what it is that's running these startup item words are a little cryptic. So the command helps us out. This is something to synchronize my phone. I have a, a mobile phone, so I'm, I'm leaving that running. This is the Java update. I like having that running. Windows Defender, I like that for security. Trend Micro for security. Uh, FW Update. LG. That is something to do with my DVD burner. I don't really need it. I'm unchecking it. I don't want that running automatically. Next, this program I do use and I want running automatically. I leave it on. I'm not sure what this is. So what I can do is I can go to Google and type in this word, esdusbmon.exe. If I go to Google and research that word, eventually I'll find a site, probably take a minute or two, that'll tell me what that's doing and whether or not it's essential. For now, I'm going to leave it because I'm not sure what it is. Right here, I know from experience this has got to do with Norton. Well, I've removed Norton, so I don't want this process attempting to run. Uh, this is also to do with Norton. Getting rid of that. This is to do with Norton. Uh, what do we have? Okay, the next is CyberLink Power DVD. Well, I don't need this DVD server process. I'm not even sure what it does, but I know it's not going to stop me from burning DVDs. So if we go to it, I will uncheck it saying do not run this automatically when the computer starts. Next thing is the language for the Power DVD. There's Power DVD. I don't want that. Adobe Reader, don't want it. Photoshop Album Starter Edition, eh, I never use that. I'm going to uncheck this. CTFmon, that is a process to do with Microsoft. I'm leaving that. 
Microsoft Money, I don't need this little program. It's kind of a reminder for Microsoft Money. I don't need that. Google Toolbar Notifier, no, I don't want that. Messenger, I don't need that running automatically. Here we go, Trend Micro. This is my antivirus program. I leave that running. The next thing is Clipfolio. I like that running automatically. I leave it. Next we see Microsoft Active Sync. That is to synchronize my mobile phone. I'll leave that there. This is for my web page uh, designing software. I'll leave it. QuickBooks, I don't need an update running all the time. And this Ultra VNC, I want running. So you might say, oh, that's fine for you because you know what these programs are. Well, if you're not really sure, don't be too concerned because this is a completely reversible process. So in other words, when we uncheck all of these items, um, what we're saying here is do not run NVCPL, for example, when we start the computer. Don't run it automatically. We're not saying you can't run it later. You can run it later. It's absolutely no problem. But when your computer starts up, we don't automatically want to have all these programs running because it really slows down your computer. So I'm saying don't run that, com that process when the computer starts up next time. If I was to restart the computer now and I decided I wanted NVCPL, well, I'd put the check mark back, I'd click OK here, and I'd reboot, and bang, it would be running again automatically. But most of the time, you're turning these things off. And if you're not sure, like I'm not sure what ESD USB MON is, I leave it on. I can look it up on Google later and figure out whether or not I really care to have it running. So that's the first step, is to turn off a whole bunch of items. Now remember, I had a whole bunch of processes. I, I believe it was 56. So I've turned off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 processes. So now if we go to this general tab here, we can say, oh, it's now selective startup. Startup group items is right here. It shows a box because it knows some items are unchecked and some are checked. The check mark here for system services indicates they're all checked. Same with win.ini, same with system.ini. Now these are really old files that are there pretty much for old programs, so you can ignore these two. Next thing that is of interest, a little more complicated, is system services. So let's click into the system services tab. The first thing you do here every time is you click this box, hide all Microsoft services. Well, why do you do that? You do that because you don't want to turn off Microsoft services because if you do, you may have problems doing almost anything. So what Microsoft has done is they've said, okay, let's hide the Microsoft services. We're not turning them off. And now we can go through each one. So here we go. Apache, I want to run that. ATI hotkey polar, I'm turning that off. Now I've spread that out a little bit. Uh, I don't even have an Epson device, so I'm safe to turn that off. Google Updater Service, I don't want that. Install Driver Table Manager, not sure what that is, I'll leave it. Machine Debug Manager, I leave that. Display Driver Service, mm, don't want that. Office Source Engine, not sure what that is. Aha, Trend Micro. I'm leaving that, that's my antivirus, my antivirus, Cyberlink Rich Video Service, I'm not sure, so I'm unchecking that, because as I said, this is a reversible process. Again, Trend Micro, Trend Micro, Trend Micro, these are my antivirus, I'm leaving those alone. Messenger Sharing Folders, no, I don't even do that. Windows Defender, that's an anti-spyware program, I leave that on. VNC Server, again, I want to use that, so I leave that service running. If I was to turn off this service, my VNC device sorry, my VNC program might not work. Um, if I ran it, it may start the service, but it may not. So services are a lot more sensitive. But again, if I was to turn off VNC server, reboot, and have a problem, I could just put a check mark again, reboot, and that service would be up and running again. So this is a reversible process. Next thing we'll do is go to the general tab, and aha, we see two of these boxes on system services and startup items. So what I've done here is I've scaled back my services to the bare minimum of what I actually want. I've scaled back my startup items to the bare minimum of what I actually want. And that's going to allow me to have a computer that runs faster than normal. So I'm going to click OK. At this point, it asks us if we want to restart now or exit without restart. If we choose to restart, 
we're going to restart the computer and the programs that I've unchecked are not going to load automatically. If I choose to exit without restart, the change has been made. So the very next time I restart the computer, I'm going to find that all of these programs that I've unchecked are not loading. Normally I do it right away so I don't forget what I've done and I click restart.